So let's start off with the course uh, on chapter one. Chapter one introduces fundamental concepts. Fluid mechanics is the study of the behavior of a gas or liquid that either is at rest or in motion. It's basically broken into three main areas, hydrostatics, kinematics, and fluid dynamics. Hydrostatics is when the acceleration is zero, so the fluid could be either at rest or at constant velocity. Kinematics is just the study of the geometry of the fluid flow, and fluid dynamics is when you have actually acceleration. Matter can be classified by the state it is in. It's either a solid, liquid, or gas. In some textbooks, they will also define what's called a fourth phase, which is a plasma. We will not deal with plasmas in this course. We will mostly deal with liquids and gases. By this time in your engineering career, you're fairly familiar with the uh, system of units that we use. We typically use two systems a unit, either the U.S. system, which is the foot-pound-second, often known as the uh, FPS system. Uh, so here, uh, the mass is in, this, in a slug, a force is a pound, and acceleration is measured in feet per second squared. You can also use the SI system or the metric system, which is the meter kilogram second. Mass is in kilograms, force is in newtons, and acceleration is in meters per second squared. So book goes through this in great detail, but I won't spend a whole lot of time on it because if you've had statics or dynamics, you're pretty familiar with uh, how to do calculations and how to do dimensionality. Uh, I will point out, you know, make sure that you know what units you're plugging stuff into. For example, a pressure is a Newton per square meter. Uh, you know, so velocity, so if you're going to use a, a typical SI units, you want to put everything in either uh, meters, kilograms, seconds, uh, newtons, uh, so you're consistent, right? So, so your your equations should be consistent. Typically, the way uh, so most of these equations are written, they're written in that order, in that way. So, but just be careful uh, with units. You don't want to mix and match units. Section four deals with calculations, and it deals with rounding off numbers. Again, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time doing that because if you've had uh, uh, Dr. Miller or, or um, in statics or dynamics uh, or Mrs. Welch, they, I'm pretty sure, grilled you on how to how to do round off numbers. But but um, you know this you uh, use the standard procedure for uh, when you calculate a, a number and round off accordingly. So the first example he works, he simply wants you to do a calculation where he. He calculates uh, the product of uh, 80 uh, million newtons per second times 5 millimeters squared. So, and again, the best way to do this, the book kind of draws this out, but what I would do is I would convert each one of these to the standard SI unit. So here, 80 million newtons per second, that's 80 times 10 to the 6th. The uh, big M is 10 to the 6th. Uh, 5 millimeters, that's 5 times 10 to the minus 3rd, and then... Uh, don't forget to square it here and then plug that in your calculator and calculate it out. Uh, honestly, you could leave it in this format here. Uh, if you want to express it in uh, scientific notation as 2 times 10 to the 3rd, that's that's fine as well. Or if you if you recognize that 10 to the 3rd is a, ki a kilo, then you can write this as 2 kilonewtons times meters squared seconds. Same thing here, for example, 1.2. Again, this is something you've, you've done before. Uh, you want, we want to convert 14 cubic meters per second into uh, feet cubed per hour. So the best way to do this is to simply they lay this out on a, on a uh, um, the way that the author is shown in the textbook here. So write down what you start with, 14 meters cubed per second. So you got to ask yourself, okay, we want it, we want the denominator to be in hours. So we got to get rid of the second. So we can go into the uh, Tape the table uh, in our textbook or the appendix, uh, and r realize that 3,600 seconds is one hour. So here the seconds will can will cancel out. This seconds will cancel that second. So let me see if I can do this in the the uh, right thing here. Um, so this seconds will cancel that seconds. Same things for for uh, the uh, uh, the feed. Uh, so here. 
we want to convert cubic uh, meters to cubic feet. So we can go in the appendix and we can find one foot as 0 0.3048 meters. And so again, here you have the case where um, meters cubed, and we got this cubed, cubed up here. So meters cubed will cancel this meters cubed and we'll be left with cubic, cubic feet. So when you plug this in your calculator, it's 14 times 3600 divided by 0.3048. So you'll get 1.78 times 10 to the sixth cubic feet per hour. So let's talk about some basic fluid properties that all fluids have. First, there's density. Density is represented in our textbook by the symbol, Greek symbol rho. Uh, it's the mass per unit volume. So if, if we know the mass, we know the volume, we simply divide it to, and that's the density. Notice our textbook uses a, a V for the uh, density with a, with a hash mark through it. Uh, later on, we'll deal with velocities, so it's oftentimes easier to uh, use this, this uh, line through the V to represent the volume. Uh, I'm not always the best at that. I don't expect you are either, but, uh, you know, in some of our equations, we'll have vol volumes and velocity, so you're going to have to kind of be careful and not mix those two up. Typically, velocity is a small v. Some other basic properties of fluids are the specific weight. This is the weight divided by the volume. So instead of the, the mass, it's the, it's, the, it's the weight divided by the volume. Uh, you'll see this on our textbook a lot. He likes to use the specific weight uh, represented by a gamma. Uh, however, since the weight is the mass times the volume, you can also, uh, if you plug in for W, the mass times uh, mg, but then the m and the v, that's the density. So you can also write the specific weight as uh, gamma as the density times the g. Another quantity you see a lot for fluids is what's known as specific gravity. This is the density of the uh, liquid compared to the density of water. So here you, uh, the symbol for specific gravity is uh, capital S. So the density of the material, uh, the fluid you're dealing with divided by the density of water, which is uh, around 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, so divide those two densities and you can, you can calculate what the specific gravity of your liquid is. Uh, you know, if you multiply top and bottom by G, that's also going to be the specific weight. So it's the specific weight of the liquid divided by the specific weight of, of water. Uh, it's a good way to know, for example, for uh, oil, standard oil has a density of 880. So if you divide 880 by 1,000, you get 0 0.880. It kind of gives you a good feel for uh, how a liquid is compared to, to water. So the specific gravity of water would be 1. So you can see that this is, a, for equal volume, it's going to weigh a little bit less. We won't do a whole lot with bulk modulus in the course, but the, our textbook does define it, so I'll, I'll go over it pretty quickly here. Uh, the bulk modulus is simply the, the measure of, the, of a fluid's resistance to compression. Uh, you know, it, it's a measure of how easy it is to, to change its volume under pressure. So uh, it's denoted in our textbook by the symbol EV. So it's equal to minus dp over the differential volume divided by the volume. It's, uh, it's a negative because it, it's, it's going to decrease. Uh, it's, it's a dimensionless unit. Uh, our book has table, tables of these. Uh, we're not going to use a whole lot of them in, in this course, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot on it. It's very akin to, uh, bulk modulus is very akin to Young's modulus, which is like for a wire, it's how easy the wire is to stretch. Uh, so this is the bulk modulus. Here we're talking about for a fluid. It plays the same role. It's basically Young's modulus for a fluid, uh, defined very similarly. One equation we will deal a whole lot with in the textbook is uh, the ideal gas law. Uh, P equals density times RT. You might have seen this differently in, in uh, a lot of textbooks. Sometimes you see this written as PV equals NRT, where N is the, the uh, Avogadro's number of moles. Uh, our textbook uses uh, this form, which is more applicable to, to, uh, to fluids. Uh, so here, uh, instead of uh, the pressures, is, the pressures is P, 
this was the density and r r is the uh, universal gas constant uh, that's given in our textbooks appendix a it's defined as as um, uh, 286.9 uh, joule kilogram kelvin uh, and T here has to be the absolute temperature. So we're real careful. Uh, uh, the absolute temperature is in Kelvin. So a lot of times our book will, uh, in problems, will give the temperature in, in Celsius or Fahrenheit, and you're going to have to convert. So let's be careful of that. So let's take a look at this uh, example 1.3. This is uh, using the ideal gas law. So we have a tank. It's uh, an air tank. It's full, full of air. And uh, it has it's under absolute pressure of 60 kilopascals, and has a temperature of 60 degrees C. Determine the mass of the air in the tank. So here you can see he gives us the dimensions of the tank. It's uh, 1.5 meter radius and a 4 meter length. So we know we're going to use the the ideal gas law that we just talked about. Uh, first thing is that we know that this uh, he gives us tells us the tank. It's full of air at 60 degrees C, so we're going to have to convert that to Kelvin because remember again, in the ideal gas law, uh, temperature has to be in Kelvin. So uh, the pressure he tells us it's 60 kilopascals, so kilo 10 to the third, that's the P. Uh, R we can look that value up, that's a constant, and the temperature we we find is 333 Kelvin. So the only thing we don't know is is uh, rho the density. Uh, so that's the only unknown, so you can calculate it, 0. 0.6280 kilograms per cubic meter. Uh, so we know the density, uh, we can find the volume because it's a, it's a uh, cylinder, so it's uh, 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 basically it's just pi r squared times, times, the, times the length. So the density we found, uh, the mass we don't know, but we know uh, both the length and the radius of the cylinder. That's the volume. So we can solve for the mass. We get 17.8 kilograms. So a lot of people, you know, they tend to think, um, this points out a good point. A lot of people tend to think that air uh, doesn't weigh anything. And, you know, molecule by molecule, it, it certainly doesn't. But, uh, you know, a kilogram is pretty heavy. Uh, you know, if you're up in the lab some sometime, uh, you know, pull out one of those, those 500 uh gram masses and so you, you take two of those that's a kilogram uh that's got some weight to it and 17 of those would would certainly be pretty heavy so that shows you this air although molecule by molecule it doesn't appear to have a whole lot of weight uh in a tank it can it can add uh, you know some weight to it okay that's the end of the first uh first lecture on chapter one there's one more lecture i'm going to cover on chapter one uh so I encourage you to get started reading in the textbook and working some of the problems. Have a great day.